to everybody. This is Esther Shore with Patient Power, and I'm here today at the 2018 ASH Conference, the American Society of Hematology, and I'm surrounded by oh, 20, 25,000 amazing researchers and clinicians who are studying hematological malignancies. And I have with me today Dr. Amrita Krishnan. Is that correct? That's correct. Yep. And, um, she is, with, she is the director of the Multiple Myeloma Program at the City of Hope in Los Angeles. Thank you for being here. So um, what I wanted to talk to you about today is what's going on for myeloma patients? What are the headlines from ASH this year? Uh, well, good morning, Esther. Thank you for the opportunity to talk. I don't even know where to begin. There is so, every myeloma session has been packed standing room only, which tells you Obviously, number one, the advances we're making and the enthusiasm regarding them. I'd say the three biggest news really is obviously CAR T cells and relapse disease. And we, you know, we started out just hearing about um, one CAR T construct, the BB121. Now we are obviously are hearing many other companies presenting their results and other CAR T constructs, which I think is very good for us because we can understand better both the technology as well as side effects and, and efficacy and understanding among different T-cell constructs. The other big thing I would say antibody drug conjugates, uh, bispecific antibodies. And then the last but not least, let's not forget in terms of stem cell transplantation, there was a big session this morning looking at new drugs um, in the maintenance setting, so specifically oral proteasome inhibitors. Oh boy. Okay, so now I'm going to drill down a little bit from a layperson standpoint okay. about what you just said. Okay. <laughs> There's a lot of alphabet soup. So I know that you've been doing some work with the drug Tara, Daratumumab. It's a mouthful. Um, and I know that that's a monoclonal antibody. And can you talk a little bit about what the relevance is about that? Because um, I think our audience has probably heard of it but doesn't know what's happening in that area. I'm oh, sure, happy to. So, you know, I should say, so daratumumab targets CD38, which is a protein on the myeloma cell. So it's very specific in terms of attacking the myeloma cell. Now, that protein is expressed in other things like red blood cells, but really it's very highly expressed on plasma cells, that sort of the myeloma cell per se. So daratumumab was already approved for relapsed myeloma, um, both multiply relapsed as well as patients who have a first relapse on myeloma in combination with some of the other drugs we think about such as bortezomib or lenalidomide. This meeting this year though the big excitement is in regards to using daratumumab in newly diagnosed myeloma and so we you know we already know it's a very effective drug in the relapse setting. We're familiar with the toxicity profile and overall it's quite well tolerated and so now the question becomes, if it's such a good drug, should we move it earlier in the course of therapy to get the maximum benefit? So it could be a first-line therapy. Exactly. So it's already approved in the first-line setting in combination with Velcade, Melphalan, and Prednisone, so VMP, but that's not a regimen we use in the United States. So there's going to be an abstract presented Tuesday, so I can't even tell you yet because it's a late breaker, but we only know a little hint of it which is using daratumumab plus lenalidomide and dexamethasone uh, in newly diagnosed patients. It's called the Maya study, and that's the one that we're all waiting to hear to see, is that going to establish a new standard of care in the newly diagnosed frontline setting? So uh, th that helps me to understand that. Thank you. So then um, are there other studies that you're involved in that would be interesting for patients to know about? So there's another study that actually was presented yesterday. It's called the Griffin study. That uses daratumumab in combination with sort of, I would say, a quote-unquote standard regimen in the United States, uh, RVD, or lenalidomide, Velcade, and dexamethasone. And what it asks, again, the same question, if you add to our our standard backbone, 
another potent agent, does it even further improve the responses? So what they presented on Saturday was very early data, you know, on 16 patients. So, you know, we need to wait more, but it just shows you the excitement around that. And that data they presented really was around the safety and suggesting that it's a well-tolerated combination with a very high response rate, you know, 100% response rate. So, Well, that would be my question then, just as a, a, a care partner myself, is when you're talking about doing those kinds of combinations of two, three, four drugs, are, are you all looking at the combined toxicity of those things and the side effects? Oh yeah, absolutely. Has that absolutely. So the Maya study, for example, very specifically looked at the three drugs, so daratumumab plus Lendex, comparing it to the two drugs, lenalidomide and dexamethasone. So, and the same thing with the Griffin study, that also was, was um, randomized, so half the people got daratumumab in combination, the other half just got standard RVD. And there was, to be fair, a slightly higher increase in side effects when you added the daratumumab, a bit more infections and a bit more blood toxicity, so lower white count. So it is something to sort of, you know, take as, as a note of caution to when you add more drugs that you do certainly expect that you are going to get more toxicity and obviously it becomes as the benefit outweigh the potential risk. As usual. Yeah, so I, I guess the other question I have is where does stem cell transplantation fit in all of this or does it? So, you know, obviously I have a somewhat biased opinion. I, I come from a uh, city of hope which is the largest transplant center in California. And, you know, and two things I could say in terms of myeloma. So we do over 8,000 transplants a year in the United States for myeloma. So it suggests that it's a, it's a standard of care backbone of therapy. You know, as a transplanter, I would say transplant still has the longest track record in terms of remission lengths and even if you compare it to standard RVD chemotherapy you get a longer remission when you throw transplant into that mix mm -hmm. and I think what will be of interest to us is further improving upon that by either different maintenance strategies or induction strategies so new treatment before the transplant as well to further improve the outcomes of the transplant. And then the other thing I should, I should mention, this is not a study that's um, open yet, but it's a study that um, we actually had some meetings about through the BMTCTN, so a cooperative group of transplant networks, trying to ask the question, and this is a group, you know, I used to chair the myeloma committee, um, and I'm still on the committee. We, we try and look ahead, right? So we say, what can we do as a strength of network of transplant centers that patients really need? What is the question they want to ask? And one of the unmet needs is high-risk myeloma. So whatever we do right now, and there's been data presented at this meeting too, we need to do better. For those patients who have advanced stage of myeloma, high-risk cytogenetic abnormalities, the therapies we have right now is still not optimal. And one of the things that we're going to do that we're very excited about is we're going to open a study that we're literally going to go home and start writing in January using CAR T cells after an autologous transplant for patients with high risk myeloma. So that gives, that's hope for patients that have not had any real viable treatments till now so or had durable treatment. ones. Durable is what durable I would say. Ones. So we're all very excited about that. It's kind of harness our strengths as transplanters, our strengths as cellular therapy and CAR T and moving it up front, so. Good, well thank you Dr. Krishna for all the work that you and your associates are doing. I know that it, it's especially for multiple myeloma patients and their families, it's so important. So thank you. This is Esther Shore from San Diego at the ASH conference. Remember, knowledge can be the best medicine of all.